I wanted to take a little time to talk more about the authentication issue. To do this, I'm going to run another vulnerable web application called DVWA. So I'm going to get that started again. I'm going to run that in a Docker container on my virtual machine. So if you want to try this one as well, it's sudo docker run. I use the dash dash rm flag here to remove it when I'm done. Uh, dash it dash p, I'm going to map port 80 to port 80. Again, you can use different ports, um, a different port for the, uh, for the host. And then it's called vulnerables slash web dash dvwa. I'm going to get that started. All right. Let me open that up in a browser at localhost. Similar to um, Utiliday, DVWA uh, needs to have some database setup done uh, the first time it's run. So the default username and password are admin and password. And so now it's asking us to set up the database. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the page and click create slash reset database. It'll take just a moment, but it should redirect us to the login screen. There we go. Admin password again. And now we're at DVWA, which yes, stands for Damn Vulnerable Web Application. So that login screen, uh, let me go back here and log out. Basically, the scanner needs to get through this um, this authentication form, this web-based authentication form, before it can access anything on the site. And this particular form, if I inspect element here, also has a hidden field that's a user token, basically to prevent cross-site request forgery. So this can, in some circumstances, complicate the, the login process. So let's go back to Nessus. And I previously ran uh, a scan on DVWA without using any credentials. And you'll see it still finds a few things. but it's not finding any of the things that I would expect to see here, like SQL injection and uh, cross-site scripting. So none of those are here. And that's basically because it can't access any of those vulnerabilities. So let me start a new scan template. And again, I'm going to select the web application tests template. I will name this DVWA and use localhost as the target. But before I click Save, I'm going to go to the Credentials tab. I'll select HTTP and it's defaulting here to HTTP login form. And if we used HTTP login form, this is where we would run into problems. We can fill in all this information we can add admin, password, the login page is actually slash login dot, dot PHP, the login submission page, so basically you need the page that it, it sends that form post to. You need to have all of the login parameters as they appear in that particular form when that's submitted. Then you give it another page where it can basically check to see if some text is there indicating that the login was successful. And then you can supply it with a regular expression to uh, look for that particular text on, on the page supplied here. Now the problem with this is basically that user token field, that field that's included to mitigate cross-site request forgery. We're supplying all of the form elements here and we don't know what the value of that token will be 
while we're filling out the scan template options here. However, there are a couple of ways that we can get around that. One way is we could use HTTP cookies import. Now, the cookies file that you upload has to be in the Netscape cookies.txt format. So you can use curl to do that. Uh, there are some browser extensions that you can use to do that. But basically, you would log in. Uh, you would export your cookies to a Netscape compatible cookies.txt format and upload that here, essentially hijacking the active session that you already created. Uh, now, obviously, that might work for an ad hoc scan, but it's not going to work on an ongoing basis. Um, also, one thing I should really point out here is if you do do this, um, or even even if you're doing this with um, even if you're doing this with the HTTP login form, do not use your own user account and don't use uh, an admin user account. Create a separate account for the scanner, a separate non-privileged account for the scanner. I have made this mistake the hard way. If you run a scan with a user that has privileges, it can cause problems. Uh, but that's, uh, that's just an aside, something you should be aware of. So, so the HTTP login form option is going to have problems. The HTTP cookies import will allow us to scan the site by basically hijacking uh, an, an existing session. But in this case, automatic authentication should work fine for us. So if I select admin and password, the login method is post. Uh, we could set a delay here. I'm not going to make any changes here. The defaults should be fine, but there are some options you can tweak if it's not working. And I will click Save. Now I have a new scan template here. I'm going to launch that scan template and I'm going to hit pause because that's going to take a minute to scan, but once it's done, we'll come back and we'll compare those results with the scan that I ran earlier without any credentials. Okay, the DVWA scan has finished. Let me drill down into the scan results. And this looks very different. I can see there's now a critical vulnerability that's been identified and some additional high severity vulnerabilities. Let's take a look. Let's see, the PHP issues, it looks like those are mostly due to unsupported versions and vulnerable versions. But I do see here SQL injection, and if I scroll down a little bit, I see some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities as well. And that's what I would expect to find on DVWA. So that's just something to take into account on your scan configuration. It may not always work, but chances are uh, what you want is this automatic authentication option. There are other options if that doesn't work, uh, but this looks like the, the easiest and most straightforward. I have no idea if this will work with SAML-based authentication such as Shibboleth. Uh, that is definitely worth testing and maybe one of you can let me know.